Why is there so much misinformation about narcissists? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. As many of you know, I'm a diagnosed narcissistic psychopath. This and the evolution of my narcissism and psychopathy has afforded me considerable insight, not only with regard to myself, but others of my kind. And as part of the extension of my legacy, and also in part because many years ago, I found the level of information about narcissism to be sorely lacking. I've been sharing this insight with you. I do this under a pseudonym. That artifice enables me to tell you so much about my life, the way I see the world, the way that I function and operate, and similarly the way that my kind function and operate, so that there is no threat to my control over my day-to-day -day life. If I spoke to you, utilising my real details, I would not be able to share anywhere near the level of information that I do, and thus you would be missing out, and missing out considerably so. Instead, you get unrivaled excellence about this subject, and it's very much needed, because there is a large amount of misinformation that is on the internet about narcissism. I saw it when I looked a number of years ago, and whilst I don't have the time to do the round, so to speak, the many failures, misunderstandings, are brought to me by you, my valuable viewers, and also my excellent readers. You have seen material elsewhere which doesn't seem right to you, or you know that it isn't right, or you're confused by it. And therefore you have sought my guidance and that you are dismayed by the fact that this information persists. But why does it persist? Why is it that this information finds itself out there? Well, first of all, there are many people who've been affected by the behaviour of narcissists who are what we shall call true victims. Those individuals want to help other people. In actual fact, what they should be doing as part of their no-contact regime is focusing on themselves and not continuing to try and educate other people about narcissism. But their truth-seeker trait and their desire to fix and heal becomes corrupted by their emotional thinking, making them believe that it is appropriate to do this. It might be after six months of solid no contact that they could embark upon assisting others, but often they do it hard on the heels of their own entanglement, and thus they are actually hindering their own recovery, whilst not necessarily doing the best job that they could be doing in disseminating the information. Firstly, they don't bring anything new to the party. Whilst, of course, it helps other victims, for other true victims to validate their experience, and thus there is value in that, Beyond that, they're not going to bring any fresh insight to things that have already been stated. They will, of course, be able to explain much of the way that the narcissist behaved and, of course, their own reactions to it. But rather than necessarily put out a lot of misinformation, it tends to be the case with these individuals that they either have significant gaps in their knowledge, which is to be understood, they're not experts, and they're not living the experience as a narcissist. Furthermore, in some instances, they simply regurgitate information that's already out there, much of which is misleading. But their attentions are honest. It's not done deliberately to mislead anybody. It's simply done by mistake. But for their own sakes, they would be better focused on their own recoveries than rather trying to help others. It's a little bit like when you're on the aeroplane, you're always told to put your own oxygen mask on before you help others. And that's what those true victims really ought to be doing. The second grouping are the professionals. The psychologists, the psychiatrists, the psychotherapists. Often, they have a detailed understanding of the subject, but there are many instances where they do not because they've never experienced it themselves. And it is a frequent complaint of those who are true victims of narcissists that they feel that the appropriate advisor doesn't know enough about it because they've never experienced it themselves. 
It's often the case that the true victim becomes their own expert. They don't need to be an expert for anybody else, but they can become an expert for themselves. And that is an, an appropriate way of dealing with matters so that they look after their own interests and make their recovery. But many of these professionals have learned about it as part of a brief aspect of various facets of psychology and therefore don't understand it with any degree of depth. In some instances, they're narcissists themselves, although they don't realise and talk about the subject with an arrogance which belies their lack of understanding. Indeed, there is one particular provider who has repeatedly failed to spot narcissists, even though she has dealt with them and has assisted them in the production of their own programmes, which is quite entertaining for a supposed expert on narcissism to fail so badly at actually spotting it amongst somebody that she has been dealing with. Indeed, that individual regularly takes work from elsewhere to pass it off as her own. With these experts, the failing there tends to be the case that they are not as well versed in the subject as they ought to be. Often, people come to me and complain about their therapist didn't know anything about narcissism and indeed doled out advice which ran contrary to the best thing for them to do. That's not to say that these people don't provide some form of value. They do, and there are others who do understand narcissism. But the point is that amongst this grouping, they also have the potential to propagate misinformation as a consequence of not having experienced it themselves and often thinking that they know more than they actually do. The third group is probably the most dangerous and these are the ones which actually tend to be most prevalent. Only today I've had three emails from my viewers asking me about certain content providers and the efficacy of what they've been stating. They've recognised that what these individuals have been talking about really doesn't make any sense and they question their credentials. These individuals are invariably unaware narcissists who think that they're victims and, in, and unaware narcissists who think that they are aware narcissists. Dealing with the first group, these individuals put out information which is wrong because they believe themselves to be victims when actually they are unaware narcissists. And because of their skewed perspective, their narcissism, of course, needs to cause them to assert control over their victims. And so therefore, what it does is it leads them to try and find a platform, because that platform gives them the greater basis, the greater foundation for the assertion of control over the actual true victim. Their narcissism but it makes them believe they are the victim. So they create a YouTube channel or a blog complaining about the way that they've been treated. And invariably, it's full of misinformation about narcissism because although they are a narcissist themselves, they're not writing from the perspective of a narcissist. They're writing from the perspective, falsely, of believing themselves to be a victim. What they then do is create a picture of an imaginary narcissist, namely the true victim. The true victim is the one through projection who is labelled as the narcissist and in order to smear them to engender sympathy from the audience which allows them to assert control over this perceived narcissist they end up telling lies about them. They invariably make them seem far worse than they actually are and this generates misunderstandings about thinking that every single narcissist wants to destroy you, that every single narcissist won't rest until you've been eradicated from the face of the earth. And as I've explained in separate videos, although that can happen with some narcissists, for the vast majority, that is not applicable. These unaware narcissists often also try and talk about how they have kicked the ass of the narcissist because they're some kind of super ninja Hayoka empath, when in actual fact they're an unaware narcissist that has been wounded by that victim, the true victim, escaping them. And in order to deal with that wounding, they have to portray to the outside world that they got a form of revenge. They will also then misdescribe the responses of what they say is the is what they will say is the narcissist when actually that person is the victim. And thus they relay to their audience the responses of a true victim, painting it as the responses of a narcissist, and thus mislead their audience with that. They therefore believe that the, the narcissist has been crushed when in actual fact it's a true victim who has. 
They state that the individual repented and changed their ways, causing people to believe that the narcissist can somehow alter their behaviours and change. All of this, of course, is entirely misleading. The next grouping are those individuals that believe themselves to be aware narcissists when they are not. This breaks down into two distinct groups. There are certain individuals who state that they are narcissists, but in actual fact, they're not. They might be narcissistic. They are often normal individuals that want to be given attention. They're the sort of edgelord, look at me, I'm a dark and complex individual. In actual fact, they're not. These are the individuals often claim that they have conquered their narcissism, that they have become healed. In actual fact, what they might have conquered was not narcissism at all, but possibly some poor behaviours that they've rectified. They were never narcissists, they've never become cured of their narcissism, and they can't provide you with any meaningful insight about narcissism because they aren't aware narcissists. They just think that they are when actually they are not. A subgroup within this are those individuals who are narcissists but think they are aware and actually they are not. These individuals can also similarly talk about the fact that they have been healed from their narcissism. I know of at least two content providers that talk in such terms and in all likelihood they are simply unaware narcissists that think that they've been healed and their narcissism is causing them to say that in order to mislead the audience, which enables them to get to the prime aims. With the audience believing, oh look, here's a narcissist who has been successfully cured, there's hope for my relationship with the narcissist. And all it does is send people on fool's errands, putting them in a position whereby they attempt to continue to engage with the narcissist and get nowhere. These individuals provide a degree of insight into narcissism, but they're nowhere near as aware as they think they are. These are the narcissists who would be king, a separate video that I've set out. And they often come along with some very strange ideas about what narcissism is about, which of course belies their status as unaware narcissists. If they were truly aware, they would be able to provide you with observations and content along the lines of what I do, but they can't. I know some of these individuals plagiarise my work because they don't actually have the level of insight. They have to try and steal it, which also is testament to their narcissism. In other instances, they believe that they have that insight and they haven't because they get so many things wrong. And these individuals are perpetrating misinformation. Naturally, you can point out to them that what they state is wholly incorrect and doesn't actually stack up logically, but they won't accept it because their, no their narcissism will not allow them to accept it. And thus they continue to propagate ideas and theories which are incorrect and results in so many people coming to me, scratching their heads about these individuals and asking, could this be right HG? Surely not. It doesn't make any sense what they're stating. The actual providers that give you information that is accurate and wholly accurate are very few indeed. For the most part, you get a mishmash of information which is incomplete, misleading and downright dangerous. And that is why by continuing to access my work done by somebody who is able, because of my insight and my level of intelligence, to provide you with that unrivaled information but also that resonates so clearly with you so that you can understand it, that it is reflective of your own experiences and logically fits together. This is where you receive the information. Out there, there's a lot of misinformation and you can play your part in flagging it as such and directing people to appropriate sources of information instead. Now, there are many providers that are useful in terms of helping you heal, that are there to help you understand more about you. 
There are more providers in that field which are more competent than talking strictly about narcissism. But when it comes to the issue of narcissism, there's so much misinformation out there about my kind, because there are those that are well-intentioned, but really regurgitate what's already out there and simply fail to plug the gaps. There are those that haven't lived it and therefore approach it in a very dry, esoteric, scientific way, which has some value, but ultimately falls short. And then there's the most dangerous group, which are those who believe that they're narcissists when they're not, and they simply steal other people's work and regurgitate it and don't provide you with a valid insight. And then the unaware narcissists that think that they are aware when it's patently clear from the information that they're providing that they really don't truly know what they're talking about. If you have any concerns about the information that you've found out elsewhere, the simple fact is don't rely on it. Come to my information. But you're always welcome to raise it with me for discussion if you require clarification and assistance. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.